we discuss our hot topic, we'll have with us, join us, is a <coughs> member of Computer Professionals Registration Council of Nigeria, CPN. He will be speaking to us about the five pillars of information and communicate, communication technology, ICT development, and how it can help transform economy and create jobs. Welcome with us, Mr. Ni Bodimowa. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. So technology solves a lot of problems. In fact, the world we have in a lot of things we were discussing earlier, speed limit, how we can deploy technology to develop, to help in the economy, to create jobs, to be more efficient when it comes to processes. Um, you, you had mentioned something about five pillars that caught our attention. What are these five pillars and how can they help and develop our economy? Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's happy to be here. You know, it's a very, very popular show and yeah, you, yeah, you ladies are doing a Fantastic job. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so these five pillars, right, and how it, how it, how it uh, relates to growing the economy, which is our main focus at the moment in Nigeria. Um, so as you mentioned earlier, you know, technology it tends to transform and, you know, create efficiencies. But it doesn't just come out of the blue. You need to have some foundational uh, elements in place first, right? Um, so at the, at the first level, right, is uh, training and capacity development. Right, you need to essentially build your talent pipeline across the country. Right, um, you need to uh, support entrepreneurship. Um, you also need to fund the the ideas and innovation. Right, um, and then you also need to ensure that there's sustainability in that framework. So as con you know, con uh, companies and startups are growing, right, uh, you are supporting their expansion and growth. Then finally, you're ensuring that there are incentives in place to ensure that these startups can continue to, or, or, as they grow, they can continue to acquire and support each other so that government as, is, as an entity doesn't continuously subsidize and, you know, for the startup ecosystem. That's pretty much what, what the Indians have done, what they've done in India over the last 30 years as they supported their growth. And that's what uh, they've done in America in Silicon Valley where government started off by supporting the ecosystem, and now the ecosystem now supports itself. And, let, me, let me try to ask a follow-up to that, because yeah. I always worry. It's not the first time we're hearing about training, development, yeah. um, getting people, building capacity, and creating an equitable ecosystem. People have done it, even within this country. But we have seen that when that happens, after the training, many people don't want to go through that rigor of training, even if they do go through it. They, 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 you're able to retain them, to keep their interest, to stay on it. Many just want something that get rich quick, train me, give me the tools. I try a few one year. If it doesn't work, I'm looking for the next best thing. I'm trying to jack or do something. You know, they don't have that staying power. So with how do we re retain, even after the training and <coughs> building capacity, how do we get people to actually get interested and wait and stay um, to, to, to see the, the, um, the vision through? Okay. Um, that's good because it's a good question. Um, Ultimately, the first of all, the, that training isn't just transactional, like, okay, go for a course and that's, and that's it. We're talking about very foundational things from uh, looking at the STEM value chain, like, as I like to call it, right? science, technology, and engineering, and math from, our, from the foundational level in, in secondary schools in school. and primary schools, yeah. and building that talent pipeline. And we used to, well, I think we still, we still do. When I was in, in secondary school, we had, you know, a, lot of, a lot of us read physics, chemistry, and we had very strong... Uh, yeah. technology uh, and ma math background. Mm -hmm. And that still exists across many schools. But what we are saying is that the government needs to continuously invest in that, support science labs across, yeah. you know, and engineering labs, you know. And then, mm -hmm. so to, uh, to speak to your question, to answer your question directly. Um, so what happens is that, you know, when you train people, if there, are no, uh, if there aren't enough industrial opportunities, should I say, you know, essentially what we call jobs. If there aren't enough jobs, people, mm -hmm. you know, gravitate to where the jobs are. So that's why you have this, Part of, part of the reason why you have this Japa syndrome where people you know, are getting enticed with you know, better paying jobs outside. So we also, now, so we have a gap there, right? And that is that, you know, as we train, train these young men and ladies across Nigeria and they, are, and they get these skills, you know, there aren't enough of job opportunities, local job opportunities for, for them. Skills. And even the, 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 the local startups, the local uh, companies, you know, the market isn't very deep. Right. So we also need support and investment so that, you know, uh, and incentives for our own companies mm. right, to buy Nigerian software, to buy Nigerian technology, and to utilize Nigerian uh, wow. technology. And that's one of the re um, reasons why I think in the, in the last year there was a, uh, an act, of, you know, um, you know uh, epoch-making act, as I like to call it. It's called the Nigerian Startup Act, which was signed by the current government, right, which is focused on fostering innovation 
and, 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 and uh, in the creative and dig digital economy and uh, creative industries, right? And, and part of what that's going to do is provide funding to start or provide tax incentives mm -hmm. for companies that are supporting startups and uh, you know, also acquiring startups. So that's going to you know, right. fill that gap in a way. Yeah, so I remember when there was the Twitter, is it ban? Mm -hmm. I would say for a <laughs> short while. I know that uh, India came up with um, their own app, Coup. Okay. Yeah, they, something to replace uh, Twitter yeah. mm -hmm. at the time. And some Nigerians went there. I went there as well. I signed up for it. It yeah. was supposed to work like uh, Twitter. But um, I don't see encouragement in that when it comes to our own product. I don't see people come up with apps that would sort of replace like Instagram or Twitter or, you know, all those social media um, platforms that a lot of business people rely on to sell their markets. I don't know if it's something that some of these young minds, so instead of saying, I've gotten the skill, um, there's no job, uh, can they get the skill as well as learn how to begin to create something for themselves, create jobs, and yes. instead of looking for the job, you'll get the skill, you create job and get people involved. And what role do you think government needs to play, or even a bigger companies need to play to support this young mind so that we can have uh, something that compares to so you everybody has an alternative this is the nigerian one this is the one for the international market you can do both you can decide to go for this cheaper subscription you know you can sell better on this platform yeah. is there anything like that okay uh very good i think a lot of the lot of stuff you just said right now let's try and, try and unpack them first of all is that you know um we're going to talk about alternatives to foreign software. Mm. Uh, I think the example you gave, social networks, are mm -hmm. extremely hard to replace because they have what you call these network effects. Mm -hmm. Not just re you know, write a new software and replace them. Okay. So even now that uh, the, you know, Elon Musk has bought Twitter, the, current, the, old, the former founder wants to start his own, but it's going to be very tough for him because of these network effects. Right? But um, at its core is that you know, um, you, uh, people will always find where there's an, a core need. Right, okay. and you know, and when, when we speak about government involvement, you know, um, we, we are, let's look at it from the general policy framework that for this incoming government now, they, you know, when I was going through the manifesto, one of the things they said was that they wanted to try and you know grow the economy by seven percent every year, which is going to be a tall order, very very difficult, but it is possible, right? Um, and one of the things you need to do there is to ensure that there are certain ex sectors of our economy that need to grow rapidly, things like agriculture. Mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing uh, and services, healthcare, education. So those areas are places where we need that can grow rapid. Have a lot of room to grow rapidly you know, by using technology. Mm -hmm. So, um, so when you ask, okay, what can the government do? So what I would ask the government to do is, you know, to consider doing, should I say, is, you know, be very specific about, you know, what kind of um, areas that you want startups to come in and support, okay. right? That you want to support startups in, right? So, f take ed uh, education, right? Um, you can transform a child's life, you know, by providing better teaching environment, uh, better t uh, t t uh, uh, tools. I've seen that, you know, where, you know, you can, you know, just by having access to e-learning content, high quality yeah. e-learning content, you can just grasp things that you, you, you couldn't grasp before, like math. Yeah. You just grasp it easier because mm -hmm. a different kind of teacher is teaching you. So those kind of areas, where we, you know, the government should be very specific and say, look, we need more educational technology startups. And then, then um, agriculture, which is the largest part of our economy, Mm -hmm. Right. If you're trying to move the needle on the, on the GDP, you've got to focus on agriculture, like agricultural yield. You know, how do you ensure that there's, uh, farmers can get uh, the, the marketplaces for farmers to essentially sell and Help be sure that look, when, they, when they produce, you know, there's going to be an, uh, an off-take for their goods. And then from there, you go to processing plants and just generally improving agricultural yield. So those are the areas, including health healthcare technology as well. So that's the areas where the government should focus on. So, um, I you know, when it comes to tech, at least tech innovations, that we, some of the innovations we've had in recent times in Nigeria is the e naira, And um, we've had a guest come on the show when it was just launched to tell us about it, but we haven't heard much about it now. Mm -hmm. And what are the potential advantages that this has? What do you think we should be aware of concerning e naira? Okay. Um, that's actually quite important and very relevant to what's going on. What has happened recently? You know, um, I mean, we're all here the first quarter okay. of this year yeah. when you know, we had a cash, mm -hmm. sh <laughs> cash shortage crunch in Wahala. You know, and um, so the, 
what, what, I became, what became clearly obvious is that, look, we need um, this cash thing, a bit, a bit of a problem for us in Nigeria. And, uh, and the promise of ENA about two years ago was that we will now be able to digitize our currency and you know, make transactions faster, cheaper, and everything, everything will be on Kidori. But what has happened over the years? Now, ENA was launched about two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and over the last two years, what has happened is that the uh, central bank mm -hmm. right, and its partners mm -hmm. have been working to essentially build out all the integrations, how it connects to different financial institutions, oh, okay. and how to you know, just testing and making sure that everything is working properly. Mm -hmm. right? um, what we notice now is that um, I think about since October, uh, November last year, mm -hmm. there's been a very huge uh, growth in Inara wallets. That mean, uh, okay. that, like that, what that does that mean? How does yeah. that happen? So what, what, okay. so what is happening is, um, if you think about what Inara is, it's, it's like you have your physical Naira, mm -hmm. right, paper, and then Inara is basically, and that's what we call fiat money, and bearer, the bearer instrument. So whoever, if I give it to you, you own it. It doesn't have my name on it. Whoever owns mm -hmm. you know. So Inara is just like that. It's not like money in your bank. It's like a, it's a, it's a digital bearer token, mm -hmm. right? So what has happened is that, um, and what, one of the key things is that the government can, you know, it has some attributes that allows governments to uh, monitor and uh, specify what it can be used for. So uh, right now, um, I'm sure you've heard that you know, there's meant to be an $800 million subsid, uh, yeah, subsidy, disbursement, mm. disbursement thing, not subsidy, disbursement to cushion yeah. palliative yeah. sort of thing, right? And, and that's going to be dispersed largely through the Ministry of uh, Humanitarian Affairs, right? Yeah. right? And um, so what, uh, what is happening is that, you know, in our wallets are being opened uh, across the board for, for people. For all those people? Well, for, not just them. You know, okay. I think that we have about 30 million in our wallets now. Right? Okay. That was announced by the central bank government. Uh, uh, governor, mm -hmm. right? And so, and they are open, they're being opened across Nigeria. People are going on, uh, you can use your EOSSD or the uh, Inara app to do all that stuff, or to, to sign up. So there's been a huge growth, and that's because the com technology is now very stable, okay. right? And, and so that's... That, that's so it's that's, traceable. Yes, it's not like tra before where they say yes. they gave out $800 million, and now when, where did yes. the money go? Oh, yeah. But now we can check and say this yes. one, we've got this amount of money. Yes. Right? Oh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And but not only that, not only that, what is particularly interesting and unique about it, about not just in but what we call digital currencies, and, and is that you can do what we call program them and say, look, if I'm giving you this... 1,000 naira, you can only use it for food. So when you are right. transferring, it can only be used for okay, to pay, 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 items. You can you can pay very rent, you know. Oh. You can, so you can, you can make very, very targeted interventions right. to help maybe uh, women, you know, that are in uh, distress or in, you know, right. people that are in... Uh, so for example, they give you the money baby. for fuel. Oh. They don't yes. use it for fuel. Yes, yes. Yeah, that that exactly. Okay, so run. my question is... Okay, okay so when we first right. heard about the e a lot yeah. of us were, we thought, oh, this government coming up again with, you know, things that are already existing, duplicating things. We already have our money, and our money is almost basically e-money because we don't see it anywhere. We do the bank transactions. Yeah. So I know one of the questions has always been, how is it different from what I already do now online? And then, um, are you saying, with the example you just gave, are you saying that the only way to encourage use is for government to give free e-Naira? And how much would that cost government? Okay. So, so you're saying, okay, like if, uh, women who are in distress and you say, okay, I'm going to give maybe monthly, I'm going to give a thousand e naira to you to help you do this. So you're saying government will use that sort of as an incentive to get people to sign, to sign up, up uh -huh. for e naira. I'm wondering how much can government do for how many people can government do that for? Okay, so I think the premise is wrong. Government is okay. not trying to, I don't think government is trying to, uh, get, people uh, to, sign up to get people to sign up by giving them free money. Right. It's just a particular use case that works well with digital currencies. Like, look, mm -hmm. we, need to, we need to pay uh, people in a very transparent way and like, it's auditable. This is a perfect technology to use. And so we like already for have charities it. and things yes, like that? Yes, okay, yes. I guess and donations. So to, no, the people are, are subscribed. There's a lot of interest in ENAR right? okay. you know, over the years you know, and, and it's growing very fast. You know, and uh, because of the, and what I failed what I forgot to mention, was that because of that cash crunch that we had in the first quarter, Mm -hmm. There was a renewed interest. That, look, look, maybe Ina can solve this. If I cannot get cash, let me get Ina. Was there? You know, and those, yes, there was. Yeah, the data shows it, and there's a mm -hmm. very steep they curve. They didn't tell us. So, a very steep I curve. Don't know so why people we're are crying. Where would that just go? They didn't in. tell us. Oh, yeah. But I have a fear with this Ina. You know, I like to listen to conspiracies. 
And one of the conspiracies I've heard so far is the fact that um, the government all over the world is not just Nigeria now, is trying to control people's money, your uh, ability to use, manage, they, they want to know how you spend your money, what you spend it on, they want to be able to take your money at will and you know, give you stories. And that's what's been going on. Now, with this in era where you, it can be directed to a specific item they want you to. So if I give you this money and I say use it for food, I can ensure that it's just food. Isn't it dangerous that it will come to a point where I say, okay, you're not using, there's no money anymore in the wallet, and I block off your chances of spending that money in anything? Okay. What happens to... Hand it over your control the, to government. Yes, much. Okay. yeah. Um, I, I don't... I, I hear your concerns. Right? <laughs> but... Uh, that's not what's going on. Um, so you, if you, for example, if I decide to, I mean, even with physical current, uh, cash now, when we, if you are saving for a particular purpose, there are, there are mechanisms where you can say, look, this money I'm putting aside for this particular purpose, mm -hmm. right? And there are guidelines on how it is dispersed. Yeah. But not that My same choice. Your, your choice. Yes. yes. But with this now, government can say this money is just supposed to be used for this <coughs> and block out any other... Ch so now, if I want to do transfers mm -hmm. with my bank account, I can transfer to anybody. I don't have to take permission from governments, so okay. to speak. But the e-wallets um, now, government has a say on blocking out some channels they don't want you to... Is that to possible? Is no, it possible? No, 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 no. Mm. no that's, not, that's not what it is. Mm. So for now. So, no, that's not what it is at all. Because, uh, because if, for example, <laughs> it's the case that if I say, if I'm giving you money for say, to buy food stuff for children or so, your children, mm -hmm. right? And that's what that money is for. Mm. You know, once you've done it and you've transferred it to the people, mm. to the vendor, mm. and the vendor can now okay, decide so to... If I, I don't what want you're to saying buy is that children, it. I want to use it to buy a shwebi. Yeah, 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 so what you're saying <laughs> to me is, it will make me better organized. I'm able to do my budget better because yeah. I already have... That's what I'm understanding, but I could be wrong again, which is I would... Uh, once I have the money, let's say, in my account mm -hmm. right now, I can put 30% that goes here, like I already do with my regular accounts. But in this case, I'm unable to change my mind mm. yeah. because the bank knows where the, the money is going immediately. Go. So it makes me better organized and maybe helps me to follow my budget better. Is that what I'm hearing? In a way, it's that, that, that applies. But the core focus of uh, core objective is to ensure that it's auditable, that when oh. it's an intervention for a particular purpose, it's not being diverted for okay. other purposes. Okay. All right, so much to do about That's the good. Eli E-Wallet. Let's, let's yeah. talk about, I mean, because I want us to wrap up on this. Yeah. There's a new administration coming on right now, mm -hmm. and there has to be a focus because I mean, world over, ICT has helped to develop economy and to um, help more with more efficiency, especially with government transactions and all that. What would you advise the incoming government to do when it comes to ICT? What can they do? Actually, aside from the training you said earlier, yeah. what kind of infrastructure? Because if recently, we, we, what we've had recently, it had bank transactions hanging because we, had, we lack, NBSS was saying that they don't have enough capacity for what happened recently. So how do we develop our infrastructure locally to support um, e-transactions across the country? Okay. Um, I think the government needs to take a holistic approach, right? And they, are exist they don't need to reinvent the wheel. There are already existing laws and, you know, and, and frameworks that they can follow. So I would say, ultimately, we want, we want, I would like expect the government to be guided by this Nigerian Startup Act. It's very broad, apart from the training that I mentioned, it's also providing support for the infrastructure, what we call infrastructure technology companies, or you know, uh, people that are essentially working on building out data centers to support other organizations. Data centers, technology parks, um, uh, different kind of systems to increase right. capacity. You know, and even uh, um, uh, venture funds as well. So I would say that um, the real focus, the government knows what to do. What we, you know, and what we really need is to uh, raise awareness about what the opportunities are. So, for example, now um, a lot of people do not know that the African Development Bank, the Agent Francais de Development, uh, Islamic Development Bank, have all come together and set up a fund, about $618 million, for Nigeria specifically, wow. to support digital innovation and creative industry, mm. creative enterprises, sorry, right? So, you know, and, and more to that, it's targeted at young people, 18 to 35, you know, who are starting up like Nigerians. You mm -hmm. know, so we need to raise awareness that these things are available for you now, mm. right? You know, in the past, people say, look, you know, money has been given to, you know, in, when, when investors come to Nigeria, they focus on a few startups, you know, the mm. big ones, but now are, we have these development in, um, um, 
development finance institutions working with Nigeria, the Nigerian government, to support young companies. So yeah, know. and yes, and that we just need to raise more awareness about that. And the government has that 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 uh, <laughs> focus and that um, responsibility has to be on the government side to raise awareness and make sure that you know people these programs are actually accessible to everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think, think, I mean, I think we can wrap up on this and we just wanted to just hear your thoughts on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been very worried about various government innovations in the past. Mm -hmm. We had great ideas, but somehow, somewhere, either the, 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 you know, the, you know, the youths don't take full advantage after the, or they do, and somehow, somewhere, it just doesn't, they don't follow through, yeah. or the ecosystem is not there, it's not well organized. So sometimes I wish that, I, sometimes I feel like we put the cart before the horse. So I feel that there are more foundational things that need to be done before to get to the point where we're building an ecosystem. Because sometimes you give an ecosystem to a bunch of people who are not properly ready mm -hmm. for it, it might fall apart. So that's my worry, but I just hope that the new administration, as you've said, would, um, would do the right thing. And ensure. Well, that's what we all pray, because, yeah. uh, you know, if you're going to grow this economy, you really got, you have to get on the, um, uh, starts immediately, right? And you know, be very focused on which areas of the of the of the GDP you want to, you know, target investment in and support and grow. You know, that's what we are. Okay, that's all we can take on this segment. Do you believe in Nigeria? <laughs> I'm uh, unbelievably relentlessly, relentlessly in support of Nigeria. Very bullish. Very it's, bullish. Yeah, you're not Jack White Nigeria. You just came back. No, no, no. I've been here for. As I said, I was born. So, oh, you know, just checking. I'm not so going anywhere. Young people that are speaking like I'm, not, I'm not going anywhere. Wait, no, no, no. Canada passport. All right. That is all we can take on this.